From the annals of life imitating art comes the story of romantic comedy writer Delia Efron, whose own real-life tale of heartbreak and second chances could easily have been scripted by, well, Delia Efron. She's on Broadway with Dr. John LaPook. In your wildest imagination, did no. you ever imagine? No, actually it was a dream too big. Writer Delia Efron, famous for rom-coms like You've Got Mail. Do you think we should meet? Meet? Knows how to dream up a fairy tale storyline. You have a play that's going to open up on Broadway. Yeah, I know. How amazing is that? How amazing is that? But Efren's Broadway debut later this month comes directly from the pages of her life. He had prostate cancer. It had spread to his bones. The doctor said, we've done all we can. Delia, you write about the most intimate things, but now your life is on the stage for everybody to you know, see. That, that is an interesting problem because yeah. I am basically introverted. So this, this is not easy. Good girl, come on. But she sure makes it look easy. When we first interviewed Efren two and a half years ago, she just finished a best-selling memoir, Left on Tenth. Now she's turned that book into a play. My husband died. Telling her remarkable story of beating the odds. Ago. Emmy Award winner Same Juliana place. Margulies plays Efren. Now he wasn't going to be here. It's a story of a woman who loses her beloved husband of 38 years. Hi, Delia. Peter Rudder here. We a man from her past drops into her life. Everybody else. And she falls madly in love. The most wonderful thing has happened. I've fallen. What? What is it? And then shortly afterwards, I got diagnosed with a terrible disease, a fatal leukemia, and I survived. That's right. Seven years ago, because of her blood cancer, Delia Efren was given four months to live. I'm so, so sorry. She'd already lost her sister Nora and her husband Jerry to cancer. But she somehow found love again and got married in the hospital while undergoing chemo. To love and to cherish. I should say, in full disclosure, we're, we're dear friends. And in fact, I was visiting you in the hospital when you got married. <laughs> you were at my wedding. I was at your you wedding. Photographed and I photographed it. I love you very much, do you mind? Five-time Tony Award winner Susan Stroman is directing the play. It's about second chances. Uh, yeah, it's about second, second chances in love and life and being brave enough to take those second chances because most people aren't. The two women share something in common they wish they didn't. I sadly lost my husband uh, to AML, to leukemia. So when I started to read the play, I knew everything about what was going on. I didn't have to research anything because I had lived it too. How do you direct the turn from humor to tragedy and back again. It, it's tricky, actually. But it's a trick Stroman mastered as we watched tagging along every step of the way. Uh, what's better than starting rehearsal for a Broadway show? <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> from the first meet and greet to an early rehearsal to the stage of the James Earl Jones Theater. Part of me was the person who wasn't sick who had walked into that clinic room believing she was healthy. How could I not be healthy when I was so gloriously happy? They're saying it's a rom-com, and it is. It's romantic, and it's funny, and it's wonderful. But bring tissues yeah. in case you need them. Stage legend Peter Gallagher plays Peter Rudder, Efren's newfound love. Will you marry me? Is that a yes? Yes. <laughs> And the play is about two people falling in love who are not in their 20s or 30s. They're, they're older than that. And what's the significance of that? Well, you know, you're closer to death. Everything is precious. And I think that's another thing that the audience is going to recognize and feel. Delia had been in the hospital 100 days. Are there life lessons in this play for all of us? One day. I could stand. We plan our lives out as a young person. Oh, I want to get married, I want to have children, I want to have a career, you know, you make all these things. But then you don't think, oh, what's going to happen to me after I'm 50? 
and another day, I could dance. What life do I want then? It's a much more open book. And this is about seizing those years and really creating something.